Okay. December 20th, 2016. I just finished meditating this morning. And, um, so maybe you could tell I was crying. I cried really hard yesterday. I missed my mom. And, um, that's not what this is about. But in case you're thinking to yourself, she meditates and she does all the spiritual life coaching stuff. Why is she always crying? Um, so I just want to make a quick point that just because you are doing your own spiritual work and meditating doesn't mean you're never going to cry again. What it means is you become more okay with crying. So, um, you just get your feelings out and then you move on with your day so that you, so that, um, you don't pretend that you're not sad. You just are sad and you move through it quickly. Um, what I, this is a quick one, but so as I was meditating, um, my dogs were around me because I was in front of the fireplace and my, two of my dogs were around me and one Betty Walker, who's a train walker, Kunon, she, she kept nudging me, um, just, you know, lovingly, but wanted me to pet her and all that. And so this is where this came from. So in the meditation, um, so I gave myself hardly anything to do, basically. This is why I'm doing this. Because what I'm seeing now, it's December 20th. I see people stressing themselves out, giving themselves like crazy amounts of things to do. Um, and I'm just going to use as an example, making Christmas cookies. Okay. So I haven't made Christmas cookies in years because what I found was I would, it would take time to look up a recipe, make a shopping list, go get the stuff, wreck the kitchen. Uh, I'm not the domestic goddess that some people are, uh, wreck the kitchen, make all these cookies. Then, I mean, cleanup was like the whole next day was like cleaning up for making cookies and then, um, putting them together and then giving them to people. And so many people really that I know and I'm friends with don't really want cookies anymore. They don't want sugar. They'd be happier if you cut a bunch of fruit and give it to them. But okay. So, um, Anyway, this is the point. Um, so during the meditation, while I was trying to meditate, um, because I gave myself nothing except meditating to do, because the only thing I gave myself to do for that amount of time is meditate. When Betty was nudging me to try and get me to pet her, it was fun it was funny. It was cute. It was loving. It was, um, well received. Let's say I was, um, it added to my experience of meditating rather than detracting. So as I was trying to meditate, which there is no try. So as I was meditating, watching my thoughts and moving along through the meditation, and my dog was just giving me little nudges and, um, I could just feel her rubbing her face on my, um, I had a shawl, you know, a meditation shawl. Um, oh, it was just, it was just so much love, you know, and the heat from the fire and the dogs. And it added to my experience of the meditation. Now, if I had given myself a lot of things to do, like, I have to make a list. I have to go grocery shopping. I have to make cookies. I have to wrap presents, which I do. I have to wrap presents and you should see my laundry room. I think I might just take you to take this video down um, the hallway and show you my laundry room just cause it's, it's hilarious. But I, all I planned on doing this morning was, you know, meditating for that amount of time and no, there wasn't anything else competing. And so because basically my mind was clear and focused on meditating. My dog lovingly and nudging me added to the experience. If I had, oh, so 
I'm making a, a point. So this goes um, for not meditating, but like living your normal life. So if you're, um, let's say you have a ton of crap in your mind um, in the morning. Uh, let's say, so I have two kids and I have to get one out by like 8, 10 and the other one out by um, 5 to 9. All right, so I have two lunches, I have breakfast, whatever. Um, so I have these priorities. I have these things that I have to do. Now, if I add to that plate, I'm actually subtracting from the happiness and joy in my life. So the more crap I put on my proverbial plate in my life, um, the less uh, patience and acceptance I have for things I didn't count on. All right. So during my meditation, I didn't count on Betty Walker nudging me. Um, that wasn't in the plan. I was planning on meditating and just meditating. But since I didn't have a lot of crap on my plate, you know, I was just meditating. Then when life happens or things that you don't expect, like Be Betty nudging me or, um, I mean, maybe your friend locks their keys in their car or something like that. You get a call that you didn't expect. If you have a lot of crap in your mind or things you have to do, if you've loaded up your life, like I, I see people loading up their life with stuff that really doesn't need to be done at all. Um, when you make plans, when we make plans, we're looking at an empty calendar. So, so for example, for the month of December, it's your calendar is pretty empty when, you, when you're in October. So you start loading it up. Oh, can you come for this? Sure. Yeah. Can you be part of this, um, play or, um, you know, church thing or, um, you know, whatever you're looking at an empty calendar and you're like, Oh yeah, we can easily fit that in. And then as time goes on and then your close friends are like, Hey, let's go, you know, out tonight or whatever. Oh, okay. Then you start to get squeezed. And I teach my, I, I teach three to five year olds how to meditate. And I told them the Wayne Dyer orange, um, parable type thing that what comes out of an orange when you squeeze it, just orange juice. And so when you fill yourself with love, then when you get squeezed, only love can come out. Okay. So they are so cute. They really get that. Um, I don't think I'm making my point very well at all, but, um, but I often feel like that when I make these videos. So I'm just going to keep going. All right. So maybe some of you got that. I'm going to try and explain it more clearly right now. So if you don't jack your schedule and like jam it full of stuff, then when, and, and if you try and keep it, um, the emptier your, okay. The emptier your schedule is the clearer your mind is. Okay. The clearer your mind is the more present you can be. The more present you can be and the, and the clearer your schedule, it's not, it's, it sounds like you would be bored, but it's not bored. It's not boredom. It's, um, it's actually peacefulness and being with yourself. So like people in our society, I see what I see is, and I live in Fairfield County, Connecticut. So I see a lot of people that are almost, almost, don't go freaking out on me, almost afraid to sit still for, for an hour. <laughs> like they have to, they fill their time, they fill their schedule with all the stuff to do. And they, um, they enjoy posting things on Facebook, which is fine. But if you enjoy Facebook and you enjoy posting things on Facebook, then you should build that time into your schedule so that you're not um, pushing yourself to stay up till four, you know, doing those kinds of things. So 
you can look at your calendar of events and you can fit things in, but maybe, maybe instead of fitting in another event, you should put, put in there Facebook, you know, and I, I glued these nails on, <laughs> um, to try and grow my other nails out. Cause I really enjoy picking my nails. I love, I don't know why I just love to pick my nails. So I'm trying to grow them. Um, so just decompressing and cleaning out your schedule and making time to just be with yourself or, you know, if you write meditation on your schedule, just like have a shorthand for it, like M with a circle. And if you try and schedule, they say what, what doesn't get scheduled doesn't get done. And it's so true. Or it gets done at like two in the morning, three in the morning, you just push, push. And then your body gets, you know, especially like in the holiday season, you tend to eat more sugar, you tend to drink less water, you tend to drink more alcohol, more coffee. Um, so you're basically taking less care of your yourself, your body. Um, and there's another video I want to do, but I do want to say real quick about um, our bodies are just our car for our soul in our trip around this time. So instead of being able to, you can't trade in your body really for the most part. I mean, you can change a lot of things, but, um, it's like souping up a car or whatever. So your body is just your car. And I see a lot of people making huge big deals out of skin color and, um, gender. It's like, Oh, come on. Or it's just a car. It's just a car. Yeah, I'm a white girl and I don't mind the the term girl. I don't mind cuz it it doesn't matter. It doesn't it doesn't hurt me. Um this is a total tangent, but um so as I said, it's December 20th. It's after the election and it was a little frustrating for me that when Hillary Clinton didn't win, um, there was this air of, oh, like all women were all little girls and stuff were victims. Um, and that, uh, she just wasn't hired for the job of president because she was a girl. And that's just, oh, come on. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. I've been a man, you know, past incarnations. I've been a man, you know, um, the color of our skin doesn't matter the uh, color of our hair, our eyes. It's just, if we all looked the same, we wouldn't be able to tell each other apart. So you have a body, which is your soul's car in this lifetime. That's all it is. You have to take care of it. You, well, you don't have to actually, but people don't have to take care of their cars either. You can feed it crappy food. You can put the wrong gas in your car. You can put sugar in your gas tank and you can put, you know, all sorts of chemicals and, and crap in your body too. You know, and your, your body's gonna, um, let you know that, it, uh, you didn't give it the best quality ingredients. So we have to take care of our bodies if we want to be able to drive around in this life in the happiest way possible, um, you could go four wheeling in your car and you can also be really rough on your body just to enjoy it. But this is, you know, don't get people, please, please stop getting so wrapped up in your car. This is just a car. And, um, it's really cool. Like if you just look at people's bodies as their car, it doesn't matter what color it is. It doesn't matter what color the eyes are or the hair or the skin. It doesn't matter what gender, race. It's all cool. It's all cool. Like, I love how different people are. I love, um, I love, you know what I love? I love black women's hair. They do the coolest stuff with their hair. It's like, since I was little, I was like, that is so cool. Um, and I've decided to, um, use the word black because Larry Elder, um, I saw an interview with this guy, Larry Elder. I think he's pretty cool. And he, um, 
he made his case for the, the term black instead of African-American, stuff like that. So, you know, I do try and be as politically correct as I can, but there was a black guy on a video that I watched who said really well, he says, there's a lot of good white people that are afraid to talk because they're, because they're afraid they're not politically correct and they're afraid to hurt people's feelings and they're afraid to say the wrong thing. Yep, I'm one of those. And he said, we need to talk. We need to have conversations. And I thought that was an excellent point. Um, okay, so back to the whole point of this was um, watch out over scheduling yourself and, and schedule some time to meditate or read or do nothing every day so that if something comes up that you didn't expect, instead of reacting and being angry, because that's that's what happens. If you have a whole bunch of crap to do and you got to get it done, then if your friend calls, I locked my keys in my car, you're like, oh, God, and you're not going to enjoy the experience. Whereas if you're somewhat bored almost you're almost bored like you have nothing to do and they're like oh I locked my keys in my car it's like hey great I'll come get you we'll get a coffee um and um you know hang out and then you're able to be present with your friend and enjoy your friend because you don't have a million things to do and that's goes for your kids too so if you wake up early enough to get all your stuff done with your kids then you can um, make them breakfast and sit down with them and stare at them. And I'm telling you, when you stare at your children, um, their childhoods don't go by in the blink of an eye. When you stare at them enough, make, make a plan to stare at your kids for an hour every day. Um, I build mentally build into my schedule time to stare at my children and love them, each one, and my dogs. Because... Um, I've lost dogs, you know, in my life and, uh, my, what helped me get through, number one, they were rescued. So I saved them. So they had a longer life than they would have. But number two, um, I can always look back on my time with my dogs and say, I love that creature as much as I possibly could. Like I, right now I can, I can see. So for the rest of my life, I can remember, I can close my eyes and remember what it was like to hold Ava's face and just stare in her eyes and just pet her and be with her. And, and Betty and Dean and Cato, I remember. And I don't think a lot of people do that. I, um, there was a person that wanted me to do more, let's say. And I said, I, I can't, well, I can't do more. I'm not gonna, I could, I'm just not going to, you know, because I, I need to meditate. I need to like, I be, I don't want to be a hypocrite. So I have to meditate. So, um, I can't tell other people to meditate and calm down. And then I'm over scheduling myself and going crazy. Then I'm a hypocrite. Um, she's like, well, I'm busy. I said, but I'm not, I'm choose, I choose not to live that way. And she thought I was insane that I consider loving my animals as something I have to do every single day. And I'm telling you, if you do it, you're going to be so happy you did. If you'd say, well, I have, so for me, I have two dog, uh, two kids, um, three dogs and a husband and my dad. So those are priorities in my life. They're like close to me. So in my mind, I always have a schedule in my head where I have to spend time with each one of those beings. So my two kids, my three dogs, my dad and my husband. So there's seven beings that I prioritize in my life. And so, um, when you start to think like that, you're able to better calm down and be more present for your people who are your priorities. And, um, because I was not bored, but I was happy and I was 
at peace when I was doing my meditation. I don't, I don't even need to meditate for very long. I mean, even, even five minutes, but you know, 10, 10 minutes probably is normal for me. And a long one would be a long one would be 20 minutes at this point. But I mean that it, it took a long time, but I can get there maybe longer, but I don't really care. But, um, because I sketch, I was so joyful in my meditation that when my dog like nudged me, I was like, Oh, thanks. I'm enjoying my life more. That, that was completely unexpected. And I was so happy that she nudged me. I don't think I'm making my point very well at all. I was so happy because I had the time to allow for something unexpected to occur. Okay, so here's what happens. When I said that I, so I channel, I don't know if you know what that means, but when I said that I don't think I made my point very well, then I surrendered and I sat back and I listened and I channeled in uh, my guides showing me how to explain better. Okay, so when I say I don't think I'm making my when I said I don't think I'm making my point very well, I surrendered and I allowed the channel to open, which I should have done before I started. Whatever. Sorry. This is how we learn. So you can do this, too, when you're having a hard time or you're worried about something. You just you just kind of in your mind, you can say you don't have to say it out loud. I don't think I'm doing a very good job, blah, blah, blah. So when you say, I don't think I'm doing a very good job, then kind of open the door to let your guidance in. So then they showed me how to explain it. So I will back to, I don't think I'm doing a very good job of explaining this concept. And then they showed me um, sitting in meditation, having nothing else to do other than what I was doing helps you relax, become more present and more grounded, happier, calmer, everything calms down. So I calm down and now I'm not bored. I'm at peace. I'm just present and I'm able to pay attention to everything, everything I hear. And if my eyes are open, everything I see, I can, can pay attention to what I feel on my skin. I can pay attention to my breath, breathing in, breathing out. I can feel myself scratching an itch on my face that feels so good because it itched and I can scratch it. It's like, I know this sounds probably so weird, but it's like, this is how you enjoy your life to a deeper level. You just become more present. So I had an itch on my face. And I, paint, I glued these nails on and I can scratch it off. Oh, feels so good. Even though they're like made of plastic. <laughs> feels so good to scratch an itch, you know. Ah, enjoy my body, my soul's car. Now, I'm just enjoying my existence. And now my dog nudges me. Oh, there's some love I didn't expect. So... That's the example, but if you apply it to your own life, when you're able to just be present in what you're doing, whether you're at work, it doesn't matter, work, home, because I know there's probably people going, oh, she doesn't understand, you know, oh, I got this and I got this and I got this. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. What can you let go of? What can you clear off your plate? Do you have to run the kids around somewhere that they don't really need to be? Are you stressing out your family by signing up for things that um, turn out to be not such a good idea, um, but you're forcing them to go anyway because you paid for it and you've um, figured out that you've prorated in your mind and figured out that each karate lesson is $25? Um, this is what I'm talking about. You know, it might not be Christmas cookies that you've wreck your kitchen by making and then have to find people to give them to. And then you stress yourself out by delivering these cookies before they get old. It's like you should have just never made the cookies in the first place. And that gives you like 10 hours of freedom. You know what I mean? 
So make your cookies if that make you know if that is what truly makes you happy, then go ahead make those cookies. But if you're doing it out of an obligation because you've always done it or blah blah blah, or people expect it, do you want to? Then don't. You know, by not making Christmas cookies this year and last year and the year before, I gave myself at least 10 extra hours in my life. At least 10 hours to meditate, play with my, stare at my kids, play with my dogs, hug my husband. I, I need to hug my husband at least once a day, at least. Um, just be completely present and hug him once a day. Um, just to make that connection. All right, again, this isn't a short video, but I hope you understand. I hope I made the concept. So if you're forcing yourself or your family to go somewhere because it costs you $25, um, it may be more stressful than it's worth. Um, Yeah, just take it easy on yourself and try it to enjoy your holidays. It's really a simple thing of being where you are. Um, my friend used to sign up for so many things. She was, she's what they call a SJW, <laughs> social justice warrior. And she's very, very active on Facebook. My aunt, um, said that her status updates um what did she say <laughs> she said, uh, basically my aunt gets these status updates from my friend all the time and she's like oh my god it makes me dizzy how much she does something like that okay so but what was happening is she signed up for all these things so her kids she had to get to her two kids ready she had to get them dressed up and she had all this stuff she'd made and um, she'd basically have to scream at them to get them anywhere, even remotely on time. And they would show up at a place. I think I might've said this in a video. They would show up at places so stressed out. And it's like, great, you brought like three baked items, but the energy was such a drag. So, you know, I, I did a meditation. I told people, be the person that brings the big bag of Lay's potato chips and the canned dip, you know, you can drop by a gas station and pick that stuff up on your way. And it, it, everybody loves that stuff, you know, like it's, it's always going to go. And then you come home to a clean kitchen. It sounds lazy, but you know, you only get one life. Read, read some of your bumper stickers and coffee mugs and you'll see what I mean. All right. Sorry, it's so long.